Take a moment and picture yourself stranded in a new world. You have no friends, no material possessions, no skills, and you smell bad. How do you begin to construct your world, your career, your identity? How do you make friends? What should I do if I have peed my pants? These are all very important questions. All of us face these questions throughout our lives, but to better prepare ourselves for these life tests, there are simulations, better known as Sims. Sim Social, a popular Facebook game, is a close simulation of Maslow's hierarchy of needs. I introduced Maslow to high school students when reading Lord of the Flies, a novel about school-age boys stranded on an island without supervision. They must build their own society, but without supervision, how? Sims not only introduces the students to this theory, it allows them to experiment with real-life choices. Maslow believed that to first evolve as a human, we must take care of basic needs such as food, water, sleep, and potty breaks. Once physiological needs are met, we grow as humans and strive to reach safety goals such as employment, collecting resources, and acquiring property, love and friendship, follow up, and so on. Sim Social takes students through all levels to self actualization. For example, your Sims avatar cannot be creative, attain employment goals, or even be social if they are hungry or sleepy. Social interactions create friendships or enemies. Both types fulfill a basic social need and create a virtual identity. According to James Paul G., learning and identity are closely integrated. He stresses learning by doing through games. With The Sim's virtual identity, the successes and failures of The Sim is a blend of the learner's doing and not doing. Therefore, a student can take praise or blame for their virtual identity's actions. In G's book, he writes, A good role-playing video game makes me think new thoughts about what I value and what I do not. Clark Aldrich discusses certain game design methodologies that improve a simulation game. Sims is an excellent example of some of these game design features. Sims has a mentor type character to give advice and support to the learner. Her name is Bella. Her house is always available to visit socially, to practice your new skills, or to gain tips. Levels in Sims are easily understandable and can be played without knowing all of the complete controls. Facial expressions on all Sims are obvious and communicate basic information about the game to the learner. Lastly, levels are not necessarily harder or more difficult, instead they stress different goals and become more complex. All of these game design elements are supported by Aldrich's research. The only real drawback I see from Sim Social is that it is a bit different than previous Facebook style games. In Sim Social, you begin with 15 energy points. Each meaningful interaction requires energy. However, to attain energy, you have to ask friends or purchase it with real world dollars. A handy little PayPal app pops up very conveniently to support your purchase. In older Facebook games, you would be able to engage in certain activities to gain energy. In Sims, I would think that sleeping and eating would provide energy. However, these activities also subtract energy. It is a shame that such a good learning opportunity would be tainted with an ad ambush. However, it is a good technique on the game designer's end whose goal it is is to make a profit. Perhaps using the boxed version of Sims would be better for a classroom. I'll have to do more gaming, I, I mean, uh, research.